All right, so what I wanted to do here is want, I wanted to quickly pull up one of my own pages that I built with Optimize Press and let you see what the live editor looks like on a fully developed page, something that where we actually got some stuff set up and it's not a blank slate. And so since in the last video, I was using my podcast landing page for Coffee Break Blogging as the page we were going to look at, I just simply went into my page list and I went and found that page. And now I'm going to click on live editor so we can pop that up and let you see what that live editor actually looks like okay now the first thing I want to make mention of let me close this let me pull this over because this right here is what this page actually looks like on the web now you'll notice when you're actually looking at it in the live editor it doesn't exactly look like that now so I don't want you to freak out if you find that that's the case first of all when you have the live editor you got all these little buttons all over the place it gives you an opportunity to, to edit things and add things and what have you and so you're gonna have more spacing in there than it would otherwise look like okay so that part you need to know the other thing is that if you ever if you use a custom HTML block like I have uh, such as this then it's gonna show you the HTML like this without any style sheets inside the live editor because the live editor doesn't have those style sheets um, set up like that so uh, mainly when you're using the custom HTML block, you're going to find that it looks very different in your live editor. But when you go to the main thing, it looks fine. That's why you do need to save things, go and preview, stuff like that. But going back to the live editor, you'll see that this section up here at the very top with, the, with all this, it is using a custom block. This is a, a row that I've got set up, and I've got a custom HTML code element in there. Okay, that's how I've done that. And if I open it up, you'll see how it is. Now, I don't expect m many people watching this to do this. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit more advanced uh, in my skill set in this regard. Um, and so I know how to do it. Uh, and, and I wanted to make these pages look pretty much like my main blog. So that is how I did it. I basically grabbed the HTML from my blog theme and I was able to rebuild it using custom HTML here inside of Optimize Press. Now, so if you are a little bit more advanced in your knowledge of HTML, realize that you can tweak Optimize Press like crazy if you know how to do custom HTML stuff along with custom styling. And by the way, I can show you that as well. If you go to, uh, I forgot which one of these it's on. Do, do, do. You got a few options here for controlling navigation and all that kind of thing under page settings. You can, ah, here we go. So under other scripts for page settings, you can add stuff in your header. Now you can see that I'm pulling in a custom style sheet that I've made there and I just dropped into the header. Now, if you wanna add things into the footer, you can. You can add your own custom CSS, just it'll it'll just output right there like that and you just drop your style sheet entries in there um you can put something after the body tag so if you want to have if if any um you know services that you're using specify to put things after the body tag you can do that okay so lots lots of power here if you just learn your way around some of these options here if you want to do an exit pop-up you can do that uh, if you want to direct your mobile traffic to another page rather than just give them the, the mobile responsive version you can do that as well, okay? So going back to our live editor, um, if we go down to the next row, you'll see that I've got this black area with, again, a custom HTML menu. And here it is in all of its code glory, okay? But then we get down to the stuff that I built exclusively with Optimize Press. Here's our row with a headline and everything. And then here's our video. Now, this video is being pulled from Wistia. And so therefore, I just used a custom HTML and I just dropped Wistia's embed code in there. Okay, pretty simple stuff really. Now, if you have a YouTube video or something like that, you can use that too. You hit add element, type in video, and you'll see video player because they've got one built in like that, okay? And you can actually set all this stuff up. But it, you'll notice that it does say right here, that if you embed Wistia or that kind of stuff, that it recommends to use the custom HTML setup. And that's exactly what I did with that player. Now on this column over here, it's another column in the system. I just basically set up image blocks in here and I made them linkable, okay? That's all I've done here. Pull this up, there's the image. 
and then it links to this iTunes link so they can subscribe with iTunes. And I just did that three times for the various subscription services. Now, in terms of this background color, if again, if you click on row properties, you'll see we've got the background color in place and I set it up as a full width row, okay? So it all comes together to look like that. Now, if we scroll down further, we see the next one where we've got here the image and the bullet block, okay? So go back to our editor and that's all we got. We have a two column row here and on one side, I have added <clears throat> the image, okay? And on this side, I used what Optimize Press calls a bullet block, which is basically list, you know, a list essentially. And you can change the icon around. You got all these various options built into Optimize Press, but I just went and used the simple blue one because I think it looked better. And then you got the list items and you can add as many as you'd like. And that's what I've done there. Now move down a block. We've got uh, a little, another headline here. And then I put the smart podcast player. Now the reason this is not built into Optimize Press. This is a different thing. Uh, but I wanted to show you that you can use short codes inside of Optimize Press. This is another custom HTML or code element, just like I used in the header. And you can see when you edit it, that it's got a WordPress short code right there and it will output just the same as it would if it were sitting inside of a blog post, okay? Now moving down, because a lot of the more modern sales pages and landing pages have these full width rows that, that vary in, in uh, background color as you go on down. So you can see that I've created one here, you know, a whole new row, one column with a headline, and I've made it this blackish uh, background. Very, very simple stuff. And then we created rows underneath it. Now this one, I see how I kind of had step one, step two, step three, and I had these arrows pointing to it. Well, I've eventually, essentially I created multi or two row columns on the way down. I just changed the direction as we did it. This one here is an arrow block, which is built into Optimize Press. You got arrows. And in fact, you got all these arrows that are built into Optimize Press. Okay. So I just simply used this one because it made the most sense being that it was link, it was pointing that direction. Okay. Now on this side, you've got these little boxes that you can put in there. So, and you can do, use these little boxes with a headline for anything that you want. Um, so here it is, it's a feature box headline with the subscribe on iTunes, you know, then you can edit the contents of that block and add anything you want in there. But I simply added another image block in there and that's how that is built. Okay. And we did just that going all the way down. And then at the bottom, we get this. Now, this will be an interesting one for anybody who's using lead pages or lead boxes. Now, you might ask, why am I using it? Well, I just happen to have a lead boxes account. I like the way lead boxes work, and it makes it really easy for me to track it all in one place. So even though I'm using Optimize Press and I could create my own lead box using what they call the overlay optimizer, which is a built right into Optimize Press, I'm still personally making the decision to use lead boxes because I already had the account. So if you want to put a lead box into Optimize Press, it will work. Let's open it up and show you. This is a, I think it's probably a button element. Let's see. Yeah, so I've made a button. This is a little wizard built into Optimize Press that I have uh, that set it up to look like this, okay? Using the, all the settings that it gives you. And then it links to this little thing that is basically a direct URL to the lead box. Now, one interesting thing is that if you look at the code that a lead box, uh, that lead box is, it's got a little piece of JavaScript that needs to go along with this link. And that's what it makes it so that it doesn't open up in a new window. It will actually open up kind of like over top of the page. It's that JavaScript that does that. So how did I do that? Okay. Well, if it's where I think it is, let's see which one of these, whoops, that's just duplicated it. Obviously we don't want to do that. There it is. That's what I was looking for. So there's this little thing here that will open up a little like extra properties for this particular element. Let's click this up and you can see how you can put code before the element and code after the element. And right in there, I have the JavaScript for that lead box. And so that basically creates the button links to where it needs to be, puts the JavaScript right underneath it, and I have a fully functional lead box built right into Optimize Press. So if I come down here and I click on that, there it is. 
works like a lead box should, okay? So this is a, a, just an example of a fully developed page built on top of the uh, live editor inside of Optimize Press. Okay, real quick, I opened up another one, and this is actually, let's go to it, this is actually the sales page for the blog monetization lab itself. So I'll show you what it looks like. Here we are, basic sales page, and we got these features down here. Um, you know, here's a, a row that's a slightly different, uh, you know, background color, this. And now notice how we've got a, a background back there that actually stays consistent even though I'm scrolling. See how that works? It's like this little parallax looking thing, okay? But then you keep on going, more uh, bullets, logo. You can see how we've got this set up. So it's a little bit of a different type of page with some extra type of features in there. How did we build that? Well, here's the live editor. We've got the, the, the header element, just the same as I've shown you. Now notice how you don't see the background here, okay? That's another example of how sometimes, let's go up to the top, things look different. We've got this static background in here. Now if I recall how we did this, it's under page settings. Let's see how we did that. Did, did. All right, so you set up custom CSS, and you, I've got a little custom CSS here and thing that actually makes the background fixed. Okay, see that? So there's there's CSS you can throw in here. I mean, Optimize Press is not going to do that built in like a parallax looking background like that, but you can totally do it. You just you, it's just a little CSS thing that I added in there to make that background look fixed. All right, and then somewhere in here. I'd have to go back and hunt for where it was. You've got the ability to change the uh, the background color of the entire page. And I just don't remember where the heck it is, right? Ah, there it is. Overall page color options. This was under the color scheme settings. And I set a pretty large background image in the back with the idea being that I, with the CSS, I'm gonna make it stay put. It's not gonna scroll. And that's essentially how I did that to where you get this effect of you're scrolling, but that background image in the back just kind of stays there, okay? That's how that works. Now, because this is a, a white headline, but in the here, our background image doesn't show up, that's why you can't see it, but there's actually a white headline right there. Then you go on down, you got the images, the buttons, the, uh, the, the headline, the bullets. Th this is a, you know, a cool little thing that Optimize Press has all these icons just built right into the system. You know, it, you've got lots of these things that you can actually click on and, 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 and pull in as, as bullet points. And it, it's, it's, it's very, very powerful what you can actually do when you get used to finding your way around the live editor settings. Here's the, my image, there's some white text here, but again, you can't see it because the background image in the back is not visible in the live editor. But you know it's there because we previewed it. Same thing here, going on down. Now here's a bunch of testimonial blocks that I've layered in so that it looks like this. Testimonial block is another type of block inside the live editor. Going right on down. Looks like I've got some kind of a blank row. Oh, there's probably some text in there now that I think about it. Um, and then you get down to the bottom. Our button, satisfaction guaranteed. This is the FAQ block, which is a block that's built right into Optimize Press. So you don't have to do like two column, blah, blah, blah here. You know, you pull up an FAQ. There it is, Q&A elements, two columns, and you just do your question and your answer, then your question and your answer, and you build it right into the wizard here, and then it outputs looking like that, okay? So that is essentially how it works. I'm not going to get into every little element here, but I just want you to see how you, you basically work it. You work the, the, um, the live editor, and you go through with the options, and you tweak it, and you save it, and you come back and you look, and you will get really nice looking pages. You just have to have a little patience at the beginning, especially as you get used to where to find things in the live editor. As you do it a little bit more, you'll get to the point where you can manipulate Optimize Press quite nicely and you're gonna be quite, quite impressed with what you can do with it. These are pretty nice looking sales pages and dare I say, I would not be able to build this with something like lead pages. It's just not flexible enough to do it. Now, when you have this much power at your disposal with one simple plugin or a theme, which is Optimized Press, and it's a one-time buy, 
it's a damn good deal. It just is. And that's why I've chosen to use Optimize Press for the Blog Marketing Academy.